Hey guys, it's Rachel with Be Healed Dog Training and I'm doing a video today about the Mini Educator by eCollar Technologies. Um, this is the collar that comes with our remote collar board and train packages and it's a really amazing collar. I don't get any money for saying that. It's just a really wonderful quality collar. So um, the Mini Educator, the, the collars by eCollar Technologies, these work like TENS units, um, they're not shocking dogs, they're not electrocuting dogs, they're muscle stimulators, and they work like a TENS unit does. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is go through, as soon as I can get my dog monitor to stop making noise, um, I'm going to go through what the package looks like, what you're going to get out of the package when you get your mini educator and show you how to set the collar up and how the remote works. I'm not going to do any training in this video, but my YouTube channel does have other training videos and with more coming, um, showing you how to how to put these collars into use with your training. This is just going to be basically set up with your collar. So this is what the box looks like with the mini educator. Uh, it comes with a lot of goodies inside. So of course you have your manuals that come with it. I don't think anyone reads those. Who reads these when you have videos like this, right? Um, so you've got your transmitter here. This is your remote. And then you've got the receiver here, which is the collar that the dog wears. Um, I'm going to go ahead and point out, too, the strap that comes with it is super long. You can cut this, and it won't fray. So if your dog is fully grown and you're not worried about the dog growing or um, you know using this on multiple dogs, you can go ahead and cut that strap. And you can always order a new strap if you ever need one. Um, but these come super, super long. And so you've got, your, like I said, your remote, your collar. And then you also, in the package, will get your charger. Pretty important. Um, comes with a lanyard, which is also really handy. And then you'll get these two other bags. And what's in this bag here is a, an extra set of contact points. So you'll have your set here. These are short contact points and you get an extra set of long contact points and then um, if you need in any size besides one of these two you can order those from their website they do make other sizes um, if you need really really long ones or um, if you need a comfort pad which I'll show you one of those later um, but you also have in this bag you've got a little tool that we'll use to to uh, take the contact points on and off and then you've got your tester so we'll go over those in a little bit um, for starters, my dog just barked at a cat. She does that once a night, every night, once she goes to bed. So, set up with your remote and your collar. For starters, you've got on the collar, there's this red dot. And on your transmitter, there's a red dot. These are magnets, and this is how you're going to turn the collar on and off. So you don't have a button, you actually line these magnets up and you'll see the collar lights up green. One thing I want to point out is be careful when you turn these on. Uh, if I can get it to do it, sometimes if you tap it too quickly, you'll see it, didn't get it there, but you'll see it like really briefly flash green and it's not actually on. So just make sure that the collar really is on. It'll continue blinking green when it's on. When you activate it, that color will change to red. It'll also blink orange when it's dying. So when the battery is dying, this will blink orange. Same with the light on this. So with your remote here, you've got buttons all over the place. We'll go over each one of these. Um, if you flip it over to the back, you've got this big button here with an L on it. And this is your power button, and the L stands for light because this also controls the light on the collar. So this is how we're going to turn it on. The other button you've got on the back is the M and C button, and that's for momentary continuous. And so that's for when you're working in your momentary or your continuous mode. Um, and then down here, this is your charge port. This is waterproof, by the way, but you got to make sure that your charge port is closed. Same with on your collar here. You've got a charge port here. And you want to make sure that that's completely closed when your dog is wearing it so that this remains waterproof. So if they're going to be getting in the water, really be careful about that. Um, so to turn the collar on, you're going to press it and hold the power button. And when you do, you'll get this blue light. It's kind of hard to tell with the lighting here, but that is blue. Um, oh, I'm not going to be able to change the focus on this. So 
Anyway, you'll see this is flashing green because it's charged and it's turned on. This will turn yellow or orange when it's dying. And my cat just decided to come in and say hi. Um, Alright, so I'm going to start with the MNC button on the back. So like I was saying, that's your momentary continuous mode. If you look here on the screen where you can actually see it right now, there's an M over here and a C over here. And that means that you're in momentary continuous mode. And what that means is that this button on the top right there, oops, actually, let me turn this so you can see a little bit better. Oh, excuse my cat. Nikki, go away. I'm making a video here. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, so you see that red button? That tells you when your collar is being activated. And you can see that on the collar as well. So when you're in momentary continuous mode, I'm not going to edit this out. <laughs> I mean, come on, this is precious. I'm a dog trainer, but I got cats too. When you're in momentary continuous mode, you've got your um, black button here on top is your momentary button. And that just means that, all right, get down. That just means that no matter how long you press this button for, this is going to be the most entertaining mini educator video you've seen. I, you know, I'm going to, I can almost guarantee that. Anyway. Momentary continuous, your black button when you are in momentary mode, no matter how long you press this button down for, it's only going to um, activate the collar for a fraction of a second. I think it's something like a tenth of a second, maybe, I'm not sure. Your red button is your continuous button when you're in this mode, and that just means no matter how long you hold it down, it's giving a continuous muscle stimulation. Um, be aware that that does time out after 10 seconds so that you can't accidentally be sitting on the button with your collar turned up really high torturing a dog for at least more than 10 seconds. Um, so if you ever are needing to use the collar for longer than that, if it's taking your dog longer than that to get what you're trying to do, you may have to quickly let go and hit it again. So just keep that in mind. So um, we're going to change now out of the momentary continuous setting. If you go on the back and press this button again, you're going to go into momentary only mode and you're not going to be able to see that on here until this light stops glowing but basically there's just an M now on the side and that means that you are in the momentary mode so when you're in momentary mode that means that this button the black button is your momentary just like it was before but your red button is your momentary boost and so what a boost is is you can set your boost to um, whatever you want to set it to. It comes um, defaulted to a boost of five. So that just means that whatever level I'm working at on the collar, when I boost it, it's going to go five levels higher. But I can also set my boost to 30. So if I'm working at a 10 and my boost is a 30, when I hit that boost button, it's going to be a 40. Um, so you can, I don't train with boost very often. There's a few things that I'll have a boost set up for just in case. Um, it can come in handy for certain situations. And I'm going to go over later how you set that boost. Um, and also I'm going to go back and point out, again, you won't be able to see with the lighting here. So you see the number here, that's the level that you're on. This collar has 100 different levels. So right now we're on a 5. Your dial up here is what changes that. And of course now you can't see it anymore. Um, and I shouldn't have done that yet because what I wanted to point out is the at the top of the screen, when this goes dark again, I'll show you, it's blinking 1D. And 1D just means it's a one dog unit. If you have a two dog unit, then it will either blink 1D at the top or 2D at the bottom, depending on which dog you're communicating with at the time. But this is just a one dog unit. I'm going to have a separate video on setting up a two dog unit. But if you look right now, that 1D is blinking. And what that means is that the level is not locked. You can lock your level. So right now it's at a four. If I press down on this dial and hold it, that 1D is now solid. And that means that if I turn this dial, it's still at a four and it won't change. Personally, I, I never lock my levels. I like to change them way too much. Again, you may have a situation where you want to lock the level and that's how you do it. Or I've had people do this. You might accidentally lock it and not realize you've locked it. So you just have to um, push straight down on this dial to unlock it. One other thing to keep in mind though, if you do lock your level, let's say that I had locked it at the four, 
and I can turn it all over the place. No matter where I turn it, if I hit that button, it's still gonna stem the dog at a four. But let's say I've turned it all the way up. If I then unlock it, now the collar is turned all the way up in the position the dial is in. So you wanna be careful that if you're working at low levels and you've messed with that dial and you unlock it and hit your button, you could hit your dog at a really high level accidentally. So just be aware of that. Um, again, I don't like to lock them, so I've got it unlocked now. But we've talked about the momentary continuous mode and the momentary only mode. So getting back on track with that, if I go back to this button, the MNC, and push it again, now I'm in continuous only mode. And continuous only mode is basically what we just said in momentary mode, where this button is going to be your the level that you're at, continuous. And since I'm at zero, it's not lighting up. There we go. So continuous. And now this becomes your continuous boost. So same thing, you can set your boost to whatever you want, continuous. And then if you hit this button, it'll boost it. Um, so your three different modes that you can work on is either momentary continuous, which means momentary continuous, or you can do momentary only, which is momentary and momentary boost, or continuous only, which is continuous and continuous boost. So those are the three different modes that you can work in on the collar. Personally, I always have it in continuous mode. Very rarely will I move out of that for, for any other reason. Sometimes I may, but I've almost always got it in, mo in continuous only mode. Um, and, and again, boosting, depending on what you're working on, like sometimes what I'll do with, like, with dogs that chase cats is I'll have the dog in the house and I call it my don't look at my cat button and don't chase the cat button. And so I may have like if that particular dog, if a decent correction for them is a 25, then I'll set my level to 25, but I'm going to boost it at like 40 or you know 30 or whatever's meaningful to that dog. And so if the dog looks at the cat, I'm going to say, hey, don't look at my cat. If the dog goes to chase the cat, I can hit that boost really quickly and it's automatically going to go up 40 more levels. And so I'm giving a very serious correction to the dog for something like that. So there are times that a boost can come in handy, but usually I just like to mess with my dial and just turn the dial up and down depending on what it is that I'm trying to communicate to the dog. Um, you also have this button over here. This is your vibrate button, and you can hear it. It's not a continuous vibrating. It, it'll pulse when you use it. I also don't really ever use the vibrate function on this. Some people do train that way. I don't. Um, I've actually found a lot of dogs get more freaked out by the vibrate function than the stem because um, these are just, again, you have so many levels to choose from on this. You can work at such low levels. Some people choose to use vibrate because they think that it doesn't bother the dog as much. And some people, you know, some train with, with really good reasons. They have good results with what they do and that's fine. The nice thing about these collars is you can train however you like to train. Um, and they've got lots, lots of different functions. So, also, going back to this back button. So this is your power button and it's also your light button. So if you just push this button briefly, it's gonna turn on, wow, that's super bright. A very bright light, if you push it once, it'll strobe the light. If you push it twice, it'll be a continuous light. Super bright, I use this all the time because I live out in the country, I don't have a fenced yard, so when I turn my dogs out at night to use the bathroom, these lights are awesome. Um, so that is that covers all of your buttons on the collar, on your remote. And um, what I'm going to go over now is how to set that boost. And I hate that it's so hard to see this on the screen every time I turn the dial, but just try and follow along verbally. To set the boost, you have to do that in momentary only mode. You have to change it to momentary mode to set the boost. So what you do is you go to your button on the back, and you set it so it's momentary so that there's only an M on the side, not an M and C. So if you only have an M on the side, you're in momentary. And then what you're going to do is turn your level all the way to zero. Turn your level to zero and then hold your black button down and hold it. And what's going to happen, I know you can't see it, but the zero is going to change to a one. And once that zero changes to a one, then you can set your boost to whatever you want it to do. Change the dial, so I'm going to set the boost to 20, and then when I push that button again, now my boost is set at 20. So 
I'm going to go back to continuous only mode. Now, if I'm training, this is a 20 because that's what I'm the remote set at. This is a 40. If I change this to 30 and I've got a 20 boost, this would be 30 and this would be 50. So that's how that works. It just adds that boost level. Um, let me find my parts here. So, and then right here, this is where you would clip your lanyard to, just to point that out. But I'm going to show you how to change out your contact points and also how to test your contact points. It's really important when you get these collars to test them. Um, I have had contact points in the past that didn't work, and eCollar Technologies sent me new ones, no problem. But make sure you test it, because the first time that happened to me, it's happened more than once, but I've ordered a lot of these collars. Um, the first time that happened to me, I think I tested it on my hand, and I could feel a stem, and, um, but I noticed the dog just wasn't really responding to it the way I expected the dog to, and when I started playing with this little tester light that comes with it, I found that it wasn't a very consistent stem, and so now I'm in the habit of every time I get a collar, I test it, and I have found other contact points on occasion and not be working so well. So, um, I'm going to show you how to test it first, and then I'll show you how to change it. So I'm actually missing, my cat knocked down my other contact points, so I'm going to have to find those Like, Oh no, there they are. Okay. I'm just so used to blaming the cats on everything. So you have this tool, again, that's included in the box, and all you do is use this to put it right over top of the contact point, twist it off. So these are the short contact points that come on the collar when you first get it. And so I'm going to put long contact points on because I'm going to be using this on a dog that has longer hair. And so you just take your other contact points and screw them right under the collar. And I'll just hand tighten them at first. Do make sure that you use the little tool to finish tightening them because it does make a difference in how well that stem travels. So you just take your tool and give it a little bit of a, a tighten there. Then, with your tester light here, this is just going to go right on top of these contact points. And I'm going to try and get that obnoxious strap out of the way so you can see. So, what I like to do when I test it is I go into continuous mode. And if I start off at like a 1 or 2, usually you're not going to see anything happen. Okay. Typically when you get about a 4, you should start seeing, see that little orange light right there? And it's not very strong, but as I turn the collar up, that light's going to get brighter. And it should look really steady like this. Um, and maybe in the video it almost looks a little bit jumpy, but the light is actually very steady. And another thing you'll notice is that as you turn the collar up and down, it should match the level that you're on. So like this is a 5, and it's steadily getting brighter and brighter. Well, I stopped pushing the button. There you go. As you go up. If you notice problems with that light, so like my contact points that didn't work, when I was at a 12, it looked like this did at a 4. It was very dim. And then um, the other time, it would be really bright and really dim and really bright and really dim. So it should be a steady kind of pulsating light, and the brightness of it will coincide with what level you're on. It should be much brighter when you're much higher and really dim. And usually you, can, you can't see a light until you're at about a level 4. So if you're at 1, 2, or 3 and you don't see the light, it's fine. Um, the longer contact points, I've noticed sometimes I don't even start to see it until level 7, but if you're going to be like level 10 or 12 and you don't see a light, you might want to look into getting different contact points for it. Um, I left my comfort pad downstairs, so I'm going to run and grab that because I want to show you what that looks like. Okay, my cat back there, she's stealing my hair ties right now. I have hair ties for a bonker that I use with dog training, and she's trying to steal them. Anyway. This is a comfort pad, and you can see it looks different as far as the contact points. Yeah, I've got straps in the, way, in the way here. So with your normal contact points, it's just two points of contact. Your comfort pad is going to be four, and I've seen some with six different points of contact. And so what you would use a comfort pad for is if you're going to be doing a lot of extended use with these collars, if the dog is going to be wearing these collars for a longer period of time, these help to prevent pressure sores. Dogs can get pressure sores from wearing their e-collars for too long. Um, you'll see propaganda out there where people claim that e-collars will burn dogs and show you pictures of burns on the dog's neck. That's stupid. 
those are, if they are actually e collar injuries, that's from an, a dog improperly wearing it for too long and getting pressure sores. And the pressure sores are from the small points of contact and um, from a collar being in place for too long. So make sure you rotate your collar every three or four hours from one side to the other. You should be fine. So these are great for that. These are also great for sensitive dogs. I'm actually using one for the first time myself on a dog that's super, super sensitive to the collar and this just helps kind of spread the stem out. You can also get what's called a reducer and a reducer will reduce the stem by 50%. And you can get both of these on the eCollar Technologies website. Um, this is a long hair contact or comfort pad. They make short hair comfort pads that look a little bit different. Um, but be aware that these exist because these are really great. They, they turned out great for the dog I'm using it on right now. Um, so that's what that looks like. And again, you would just change these, um, the screws here, right here. You'd use your same tool. And that's where your normal contact points would go. So these just fit right over top of that. You can actually still charge your unit with this on. It doesn't affect the charge port there. So um, anyway, I think that about covers it as far as when you get your e-collar, you know, playing with it. And I always recommend for people who are new to remote collar training, new to the mini educator, just take it when it's not on your dog and play with it. Play with the levels. Pretend you're training a dog when it's not on your dog. Pretend, you know, that you're teaching a dog to go to place or pretend that you're hitting that boost button for a dog jumping on you or something so that you get really comfortable with using these buttons and with how sensitive the dial is. The dial is pretty sensitive. It'll change those levels pretty quickly on you. So there's, you know, you want to kind of build up your finesse a little bit so that when you're dog training, it's that much easier to communicate fluidly with your dog. Might sound silly, but it can help. So. Anyway, hopefully this helps with putting together your mini educator. Again, this is a one dog unit. I'll have another video coming up here soon with how to set up a two dog unit. It's pretty similar, but there's a couple differences with it. Awesome collars. Recommend them to just about anybody out there. Um, a wonderful, wonderful, really high quality collar. They've got great customer service as well. So if you've got questions about this, feel free to contact me um, at training at gmail.com. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel for more dog training videos. We've got a Facebook page that I post dog training stuff all the time about remote collar training, prong collar training, balance training. So, um, But feel free to send me an email if you've got any questions, and hopefully this helps you get set up with your own collar.